Hey guys, it's Hannah and today we're gonna be doing kind of a longer video because we're combining my March and April wrap up. So this is gonna be all the books that I read those two months. Yes, it is towards the end of May. However, I have been out of town like every single weekend and I'm packing because I'm moving across the country. That has been occurring, which is why there hasn't been a whole lot of videos, but I wanted to get this, at least this up so I could have it like documented on what books I read because the last one I did was February. Let's just get into it and talk about all of the books that I read in March 1st. So I started off March with Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This book has been on my TBR for so, so long and I'm glad I was finally able to get to it, but I will say I was a little bit disappointed because I feel like TikTok just hyped it up so much and it wasn't really what exactly I was expecting. It's definitely more of an autobiography. I kind of went into it thinking that it was gonna be one of those kind of like self-help inspirational books and it just wasn't that. Also, I do have my copy of it. It's just all the way on the top of my bookshelf and I don't feel like grabbing it. So I ended up giving it three stars. I enjoyed my time with it. I think I was just expecting more of it and if I was kind of in the headspace of low expectations rather than how high mine were because everyone was hyping it up so much, I think I probably would have enjoyed it more. It was fine. It wasn't my favorite. It was just kind of all about Dolly Alderton's life. Her way of writing wasn't really my favorite in this so I just didn't really... I kind of had to force myself through it, not gonna lie. So unfortunately we did start March off, not the best, but that's okay. Cause we read some other great books. The next book I completed was The Dead Romantics. This is by Ashley Poston. I made one of my coworkers read this and she was obsessed. She was like, I really have not been reading good books, haven't I? So this book is all about our main character who is a ghostwriter. She ends up having a new editor. They don't really end up getting along and then her father passes away. So she has to move back home and she really hates her hometown. They kind of drove her away. And all of a sudden she can see a ghost in her hometown. She has to figure out why he's there, what's going on there. There's a little bit of romance happening. I honestly wanted to pick it up and reread it immediately after I had already read it. I highly, highly recommend it. It was just so much fun. It also talks about some deeper topics as well, considering death and grief and whatnot. And I feel like she just does so well with those topics. It's also fun because in her adult books, she really incorporates like ghostwriting and publishing and all of that. So I really enjoy seeing that side of things. So I feel like authors kind of tend to stay away from that. So highly recommend. I believe I gave it like five stars, not gonna lie. I do think I liked The Seven Year Slip more, but I still adored this book and it immediately like went on my favorites list. Next is one that I borrowed from my coworker after she borrowed My Dead Romantics and that was The Lost Apothecary. That is by Sarah Penner. I have mixed feelings about this book, I think. I get the whole premise of history repeats itself and whatnot. I just felt like the characters were carbon copies and there wasn't really any real differences between them. I felt like I was reading, reading the exact same thing over and over and it was a very good concept and I loved the concept. I I just don't think it was executed in the way that I had hoped it to be. I think I ended up giving it like three stars. It was fine, but I just didn't get everything that I had hoped from it, which is so unfortunate. So this is like the tagline of the summary of the book. And it literally says, a female apothecary secretly dispenses poisons to liberate women from the men who have wronged them. Which hearing that, I was sold. I wanted to read it immediately. It was kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie. I found myself skimming parts of it, unfortunately. But it was cool because it kept going back and forth and had dual timelines, so one, back in like the 1700s in London and then present day in London with this woman who's visiting and she's dealing with her own stuff going on. I had high hopes for this and I, I don't think it was executed in the way that I had hoped it to be. So the next book I read was an ARC. However, it is already out. It came out <laughs> February 20th. I was a little late to the ARC game, but I got it from NetGalley. So thank you so much to NetGalley and the publisher for letting me have an advanced reader's copy of this. And that is The Still Point by Tammy Green. Greenwood. This book was made for dancers. You can definitely read it if you're not a dancer, like you're still gonna understand stuff, but it was just executed in such a way that it wasn't like someone who has no experience in dance kind of just being like, we're doing a grand chate and like whatever. It actually has dancer like lingo and just everything in it. And I was thrown back into my dance days. I danced for, I think it ended up being like 13 years. 
I think so. And then I've been kind of just choreographing the past few years, but I was big in the ballet world. I did point in everything. So this book was kind of like Dance Moms a little bit because it follows the daughters and it follows the moms in this. And of course there's so much drama that occurs. The moms are all dealing with their own shit. The daughters are all dealing with falling outs and drama and mean girls and whatever. Basically this guy comes into town who is a very famous dancer from France and he is set to direct the Nutcracker. He has a whole documentary crew coming in and they're gonna document this whole thing, the whole process of building the Nutcracker, giving a scholarship and whatnot. So they have a lot to lose and a lot to compete for. So of course, lots of drama ensues along with other personal dramas. They all had so much going on that sometimes I would forget, that sometimes I would literally forget who had what going on and I would get reminded, which was nice. You could really tell how much the author knows about dance because her daughter did dance. And so she, you can tell how integrated she was into that. And while there is a lot of like dance terms and French terms and whatnot, because we use French terms for different moves and whatnot, it's still woven in very well. And it doesn't seem like it's an entire book of definitions, which I really enjoyed. I just think it was so interesting seeing all of the layers and the studio dynamics that I even recognize. Cause there's a lot of POVs. I will say, I think it's interesting how many POVs there are, but at the same time, there kind of seems to be a lot of them. And it's a little hard to focus on each one. Next is another book I borrowed from a different coworker and Y'all are... This was probably one of the craziest books I have ever read. I would describe it as Wattpad, but on the dark web. And it's so popular right now. Um, I don't know how I feel about this book. I don't even... No, I didn't even rate it because I was like, I... I don't know how I feel. But that's Butcher and Blackbird, and that's by Bryn Weaver. I... Don't know how I feel about this book. <laughs> um, I was not expecting it to be, I think I'm just like not a dark romance girly. I don't think that's my vibe. This is basically about two serial killers who fall in love, basically. Given, it was a really fast, quick read. So that was nice, but not what I was expecting because it's very dark, very kinky. The, there's a whole page on do not read this if you cannot read blah, 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 cannibalism, accidental cannibalism, and like 50 more bullet points that I was like, oh, okay. I just don't think dark romance, extremely dark romance is my vibe. And you know, that's okay. Anywho, moving on. Next up, I got an arc of the rule book, which is technically the second book in the cheat sheet, but you can read them separately if you want. Thank you so much to NetGalley for a copy of this e-arc. It is already out. It came out, came out April 2nd. I was so surprised to get approved for this and I was so happy about it. So the only book before reading this one I read of Sarah Adams was the cheat sheet. I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. I thought it was way too territorial. I was slightly nervous about this book, but one of my friends is absolutely obsessed with Sarah Adams So I was like, okay, I'll give her another try and I got approved for this art I think I ended up giving it four stars very Taylor and Travis coded as everyone is already saying It was one of those feel-good romances that you just need sometime and you can pick up on Literally the worst day that you're having and just immediately feel better Which I enjoyed so much with all of the easy loving characters the second chance romance Which y'all know I am obsessed with second chance romance romance books. I love them so much. I fell in love with Nora and Derek separately and also together and I just, I ended up adoring them so much. And I think the build up and the tension was written very well. I'm really happy I read it. It made me read more of Sarah Adams books and I'm excited to dive into her books more because they're kind of just feel good, easy, easy reads. Next up, I read Attached at the Hip by Christine Riccio. I was so excited when I got approved for this art from NetGalley. I read this on the beach and it was just perfect for that. I rated it 3.75 out of 5 stars. I had a lot of fun with it. I will say the main character got a little bit annoying, but it's basically Survivor, but more romancy, and it <laughs> follows the entirety of our main character getting on a TV show that's very Survivor-esque. She thinks that she is going to want Survivor, but she gets on a Survivor spinoff show 
called Attached to the Hip, where she is attached by eight feet of rope to another person. They switch off every week who they get attached to, and they have to compete for money and do all the games, like in Survivor and whatnot, and it was really fun to read. I think the premise was so fun. It also deals with, like, deeper topics as well. I will say the main character did get on my nerves a little bit. There was one part of this book where she was trying to get like called a certain nickname and I was like why are we doing this? Also what is this for? I honestly wish that there were more POVs from some of the characters because I loved them so much especially Kennedy. I think Christine wrote such great side characters that I would love for them to have their own books. Plot wise so much fun. I had such a grand time with this book. Reading it on the beach was literally perfect so it is quite literally a perfect summer read and it is coming out tomorrow as I'm filming this because it is May 20th. All right, we're moving in to my April reads. First up, I got The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I actually got this as an arc from NetGalley, but then I didn't read it. I got approved for it very late, and so I didn't end up reading it in time. So I ended up just buying the physical copy and reading the physical copy because I literally got approved for it like two weeks before the book came out. But I was honestly gonna buy it anyways because I love Holly Jackson. She wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I am obsessed with that trilogy. I recommend it constantly. It's turning into a TV show that I'm so excited about. This follows a documentary crew and our main character whose mom disappeared, I think 16 years ago. Yep, 16 years ago has never been heard from. She kind of just disappeared. This documentary crew is coming in and interviewing our main character and her entire family to kind of just like talk about the disappearance, especially on the anniversary of the disappearance, when all of a sudden during the middle of this filming, she reappears hence the reappearance of Rachel Price. This book was a ride. I adored it. I had so much fun with it. Flew through this book despite it being so long. I flew through it and I think I ended up giving it four stars. I had so much fun with it. Holly Jackson just does it again and it's just so fun to read and it's so gripping. I feel like she writes such gripping tales, which is always amazing to see, especially when it's murder mysteries. I think this book is quite literally perfect for crime junkies if you listen to the Crime Junkie podcast. I could not help but try to solve this case myself and while I did get some things, there were some things that also surprised me, so that was really fun. I think what docked me a star was mostly our main character, which a lot of her things that she would do can definitely be a trauma response. I just, there were some things that she was just rude to Ash, the like love interest, and I think that was a little bit rushed. It kind of seemed to come out of left field sometimes, and I wish that we got a little bit more of him so we could like develop his character a little bit more. The one aspect that I loved about this book was about how there's a documentary crew, and so told in an interesting way of like, you're being told everything that they're saying in front of the camera so that it's not really like, a whole repetitiveness of like, yeah, this, this, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, back to me being at school or like something like that. It flows very nicely and I feel like it's told very well, especially because you do need to get like all of the details and even all of the details aren't being exposed to the documentary crew and you find them out later on and like, it's wild. There's a lot that happens in this book. People are whack. People are wacky. Next up, I read a book by a lovely debut author, a self-published author named Allie. We follow each other on Bookstagram and she's like best friends with one of my friends and I couldn't not buy her book and read it because I've heard just such amazing things from my friend about it. And so that is More Than Just Us by Ali Atoski. I adored this. You can get it on Amazon. This is all about our main character, Stella, and she has really dealt with a lot in her past. We have dual timelines of following Stella and Bridger and their love story. So their love story a few years ago to where it is at now. She has kind of always felt very overlooked and not seen by her family. She doesn't really get along with them. I saw a lot of myself in her. This is big, big, big mental health rep just ripped my heart out. It put it back together again. I couldn't help but not think about these characters constantly. I still think about them to this day. I just fell in love with them so quickly and I saw myself so much in Stella. Also in Bridger as well. They were both just little cinnamon rolls that I just wanted to give the biggest hug ever to. If you haven't read this, it's such a beautiful, beautiful story. I loved it and I cannot wait to read more of Allie's books because she is definitely, she has just such a talent. 
talent and such beautiful writing style that I am so excited to just see how much more it develops and how much better it gets because it's already so amazing. So if you haven't read this, go order it. It's so good. I love it. Next up is another arc that I got from NetGalley. Can you tell I was on my NetGalley game? Not anymore. I have not finished a book in May and it's already the 20th of May. But I read Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan. I read, what was it? Nora Goes Off Script. I thought it was fine. Summer Romance I liked more, but it still is one of those ones that I'm like, mm, it's, it's okay. You know, I gave it three stars. It was fine. It was a very sweet summer read about love and grief and moving on. It kind of just felt like nothing was really happening. A little bit more like a character driven story, but our character was kind of just stuck in her ways. And like, yes, she did grow out of that, but it just felt like nothing was really happening and it wasn't my fave. It was a short and sweet novel that I'm glad that I read. And I did love the love interest, Ethan. Love him so much. I think I had a really hard time in the beginning believing that she didn't know who who he was. So that was a little bit interesting. It was a fun summer read. Next, I read my third Sarah Adams book ever, When in Rome. Out of the previous two that I have read, this is my favorite. This follows our main character, Amelia. She is a pop star and she wants to get away from her life and she absolutely loves Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey Hepburn stars in a movie called Roman Holiday where she escapes to Rome and just has a grand old time and our main character just needs that in her life and she wants to take one out of Audrey's book and she goes to the closest room that there is, which is Rome, Kentucky. So <laughs> she goes to Rome, Kentucky, goes off grid, doesn't tell anyone. And she, keep in mind, she's a pop star. So like people are like, what's going on? She's got press and everything happening. And she meets a little pie owner, pie shop owner named Noah that I adore. I love him so much. I love him and his sisters. There is going to be four books in this series, each following one of the Walker siblings, Noah Walker. I flew through it. I had such a fun time. I would reread this many times. I think I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. I just had such a blast with it. I fell in love with Amelia. I fell in love with their dynamic. I enjoyed my time with this and I immediately had to go pick up the next one. And the third one's coming out next year. Next up, I buddy read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies with my friend. I had fun with this. I enjoyed this a lot more than she did, unfortunately. It took me a bit to get into. The writing is very formal, which I was not expecting. I don't know why people are labeling this as a cozy fantasy. I really had a lot of fun with this once I kind of got past that barrier of like, I was not expecting how formal the writing was. But once I got past that and kind of more in the fantasy mindset, historical mindset, I really ended up enjoying this. I I will say the main character was a little bit annoying at some points. Follow Emily Wilde, who's a professor and she studies fairies. So she goes on this whole expedition. One of her coworkers ends up meeting her there. They get mixed up with fairy business. Really wanted to learn more and more about this world. And I love that we're literally reading her encyclopedia. So it's just kind of everything that she's writing. There's a lot of information, a lot going on, but she's really just, you're reading her documentation and her journal. I really enjoyed Emily and Wendell's relationship. I think it was so funny. It was so fun. I do think it was a little interesting towards the end. Emily was very, acted in a way that I was like, oh, okay, why are we, why are we doing this? Next, I'm gonna kind of go through these next three books semi-fast because I've already talked about them. I have a whole 24 hour reading vlog you can go watch. Um, the first one is a arc called The Summer of Yes by Courtney Walsh. It talks about some really great things. I thought it was really funny. It's very similar to Yes Day if you've ever watched that. So that was a blast. I'm really not, I'm gonna say like short one-liners for these because I have a whole reading vlog of me documenting reading these. Then I read Bride in that reading vlog. I enjoyed this so much more than I thought I was going to. I was so surprised by this, but I loved it. I want to read more. To be honest, I would reread this and I can, I really hope she continues because she sets it up so perfectly at the end to continue and it's so much more political than I thought it was going to be and I loved it. Then in that, I also read The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo. This one was fine. I don't remember much that happened in this book now that I think about it. So if that tells you anything, you can go watch my thoughts. It was fine. My memory is also shit, so. And the last book of April, April, is Practice Makes Perfect, which is the second book to When in Rome. I adored it. 
I loved it. It was so fun. I think I ended up giving it four stars. I saw a lot of myself in our main character, Annie, and I think Will was just amazing. Their relationship was just so sweet and cute and just adorable. This is kind of one of those books that like, yes, it's not really realistic, but it's like one of those ones where like you imagine it happening as a kid and you're like, yes, this is gonna happen. Falling in love with the hot bodyguard <laughs> um, as a flower shop owner living in Rome, Kentucky. But yeah, those are all the books I read in April and March. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was quite a long one for me. There were a lot of books, 17 books in two months and this next month is probably gonna have like two but you know what that's okay i am moving across the country so i am giving myself grace thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed let me know what books you've been reading recently and i will see you guys soon in my next video bye